I like to call this speed dating for open shifters. So uh, you will see a lot of really fast transitions. We have over 40 speakers today. Um, some of them are jam-packed onto panels, so there's a lot to go through. Um, if you don't know who I am yet, and I'm probably the only person without a badge at the moment because I was too busy to go over and register at Moscone, my name's Diane Mueller. I'm the Director of Community Development for OpenShift. And um, many of the people in this corner know me because I've coerced them into speaking. So if you're a speaker, um, we've reserved a section for you so I can keep an eye on you. So come on over and sit down in there. Um, uh, Joe Fernandez is way in the back there. He's going to be my runner today. It's wonderful to take the head of product management and the head of the department and this business unit and make him um, do what I tell him to. So thank you, Joe, for that. So it's a jam-packed day. There's things that we're going to tell you over the next few, or few days. Um, we're going to tell you over and over again that your applications or workloads are moving to the cloud. You're going to hear a lot about numbers and Gartner reports and things like that. Um, it's true. And you all know it because you're here. And um, you're going to hear lots of folks from Red Hatters to partners say why OpenShift is the best choice for you. Some of you have already chosen OpenShift. Some of you have already deployed it. Some of you are thinking about it. Um, and the people that are in the room with you here today are your peers and the people who can help you um, figure out what the best road ahead is for you. So we talk about um, the four Cs, why it's the best, um, code. We are like the top contributors, or the second contributors to Kubernetes. Um, we are actively participating in lots of the upstream um, projects. A lot of the upstream project leads are here today in the room. There's a lot of engineers and product managers here in the room today, and they're looking forward to hearing your feedback, because that's what today's about. There's also a lot of customers um, now, lots of public references um, out there, um, and lots of um, folks who are on the menu today um, for our speed dating session um, to tell you their stories, to deliver case studies from things from healthcare to pharma to automotive to you name it. Um, there's everything is on the table today. Um, we're on every cloud: uh, Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft Cloud. Azure, uh, bare metal, every, you know, we're everywhere. And we are going to tell you this week that we have the most comprehensive stack. Um, and that's you know, a wonderful thing, too. But I'm saying there's one more thing that you need to think about. And it's community. And that's what you all are. Um, that's the biggest C, and that's, I think, the big secret sauce um, that OpenShift and OpenShift Origin and all of the entire ecosystem um, brings to the table. That's why there's so many people in the room today. The last time we did this, it was, I think, 350 people. There are 700 of you here, and that was only six months ago. So that's really amazing. But it's not just that it's the community, it's that it's open source, it's an open community, um, and we are doing all of our collaboration out in the open. And so my goal as the community developer is to help you make the connections with each other that are going to drive continuous innovation into our products and into our projects and into your products and projects and initiatives. So we talk about um, OpenShift origin as we drag in all of these other projects. And I couldn't tell you how many balloons I would have to put up there and keep updating, because it changes all the time. And then we pull them into the different projects and, then, and the different products. And I can see already that I forgot to update it to um, OpenShift container platform. But um, as you see, we're a little busy. But really what it is, too, is there's a ton of partners here in the room, too, and we pull those services and those offerings into OpenShift through the service broker and service catalog work and integrations at all different levels of the platform. So there's a lot of you in the room from that side of the house, too, and they're listening um, as well. So what is OpenShift Commons? You know, there are lots of open source um, communities out there, lots of foundations out there. What I like to think of it is, is a new community model, kind of turning our head around, or flipping the model of um, what we think of as community and as a communication channel. When we switched over to Kubernetes, we had a lot of customers that we had to update and bring along with us um, with this new technology. And so that's where the 
impetus came for creating this fire hose of communication. All right. Um, so if you think about it, um, usually, historically, a community manager's job is to coerce all of you into co contributing code to my project. That's when I get metriced out on in, in the past. But now, really, what we're really about is trying to create these peer-to-peer -peer connections um, with each of you, get Red Hat, in some cases, out of the way so you could have conversations with each other. So you'll hear me at the break give you a challenge um, as part of our speed dating thing. We host, and I host, and some of you have listened in, and thank you for your feedback on it. Lots of OpenShift Commons briefings. Um, we have some SIGs. Uh, everything here is um, out in the open. It's on commons.openshift.org. You'd find it, find it there. If you're not a member of Commons yet, there's a join page there. And there is a very, very active Slack channel as well. So just in the past 100 days, we've had 45 new member organizations. So if you join OpenShift Commons, you only have to sign up once for your whole organization. That means anyone from um, the executive assistant to the CTO to all of your developers from that company could get on the mailing list or come into the Slack channel. Um, they come from all different parts of the industry. Some of them are customers, some of them are partners. There's a lot of EDU and government people in there. And we only have one real rule. And it's simple. There isn't any anonymity. So when you sign up, you use your corporate masters or your organizational email address. That's the only rule we really have other than good conduct. So um, we now officially, as of Friday, have 365, one for every day of the year, um, organizations in the OpenShift Commons. And actually, it's quite, that's a bit of a fudge because two more came in over the weekend. And we're pretty global. So the other hint is, if you see any Red Hatters here kind of fading halfway through the day, it's because last week a lot of us, myself included, were in Copenhagen, and we're on a different time zone than you all. And then really the secret about this new community model and the way it is, is that instead of me hunting for people to contribute to the code, by creating this networking and the feedback and the pull requests and you pushing issues in and making statements on Stack Overflow that sometimes irritate people, but um, are always good to, to hear. It's really driving contribution. The last six months has been very busy. And this is just really the OpenShift origin dashboard. It doesn't include the Kubernetes dashboard of participation. It's been crazy, crazy out there. So now we now have over 70 organizations outside of Red Hat that are contributors to OpenShift origin. And they come from everywhere. This is really about um, cross-community collaboration. Collaboration with the upstream, where big contributors into uh, lots of the upstream projects. There's always new ones. We're doing a lot of work. I'm sure there's more red things here now that CoreOS has joined, but I'm not going to take any thunder from them, because um, they're up next. Um, there's a lot going on, and that's why being virtual and being part of the OpenShift Commons community is really important to keep up and to keep up with the fire hose. Truly, everything is about collaboration. Collaboration across streams, collaboration with your peers here today. And this is really, um, and I'm going to do good here with time, what the future looks like. It's a new universe out there. We're not Pluto. We didn't get kicked out of the the solar system yet. This has been really an amazing journey that we've all been on. And I'm going to ask you um, to do me a favor, because this is part of the rules of speed dating. You have to have a couple of questions. So during the break, what I'm going to ask you to do is ask um, the person next to you at lunch or at the coffee break, when did you first deploy OpenShift? Where did you deploy it? Did you deploy it on a cloud, on your laptop? How did you deploy it? And what did you deploy? So some of you might have um, used OpenShift Dedicate or OpenShift Online or something along that line. But what I really want to encourage you to do, and I'll remind you again at the break to do this, is turn to your neighbor and make sure that you get those questions and you share that information. Because this is all about you making the connections and then connecting with people over the next four days while you're here in um, beautiful San Francisco at Red Hat Summit. So 
Think of this, too, as a way as all of these people who are speaking and volunteering their time today to share their case studies, you'll be able to recognize them now. Think of Tinder, and you're just flapping through. Oh, yeah, that's the guy from DHL. Yeah, yeah, I need to talk to him, right? So you think about that, and these folks will be at the conference, too. Everyone here is coming to the next um, bunch of days. You'll run into the hallway. Have those conversations. There's a lot of folks. How many red hatters are in the room right now? Raise your hand. A lot of red hatters in the room. Good. Because the other thing I'm going to say is we need to feed the people. Um, we opened up the doors here and let a lot of people in from the wait list. So if you're a red hatter, um, make sure you um, maybe wait in line before lunch and let everybody else eat and then eat afterwards, you know. And, um, that would be very nice. And I'm going to stop the.